In this video we'll demonstrate how you can build real-time messaging applications using a third-party service called uh, Pusher.com which has a very generous free tier uh, and how you can build these applications without using WebSockets. Um, so using Pusher uh, is very simple and uh, is much easier to set up than uh, WebSocket applications. So first let's demonstrate the application uh, and then show how it was uh, set up. So you can see here I have um, two instances of the same UX component running in uh, two different browser instances over here. And what I'm going to do now is uh, send a message on channel number one and then let's just uh, focus over here where we'll see that the message has been received by this other browser instance. So I'm going to go there and press send a message. And we'll see now that basically um, this uh, browser over here has received that message. So in other words, we've pushed a message from the server. So when I press this button over here, we make an Ajax callback and then we send out a message. We essentially broadcast a message and all of the clients that are listening on channel one will receive that message. If I press this button again, we'll see that the message updates with a different time over here. But if I send out a message on channel two, I will, I will not see anything happening here because this component here is not currently subscribed to messages on channel number two. So I press this button and you'll see that nothing happens. But if I go here and subscribe to channel number two in this component over here and then send a message on channel number two, you can see now that this message uh, updates. It updates over here because this component started listening on channel number two. It doesn't update over here because this component here is not listening on channel number two yet. So let's go ahead here and say subscribe to channel two and then press this button. So now we see that the message updates both here and here as well. But now if I want to, um, uh, let's go send another message on channel number one. So there's our channel one message and there you can see this is channel number one. So let's now go here and unsubscribe to channel number one. So if I press this button, then this component, this uh, browser instance here is no longer subscribed to channel number one, but this one still is. So let's send a message to channel number one. So we see that the time updates over there, but this this one uh, did not update because we're no longer listening. So now if we resubscribe to channel number one and then send out our message, Basically, we can see that basically the message is uh, updating over there whenever we press it. So this demonstrates how basically messages can be pushed to a client from from the server uh, using the pusher uh, service and uh, how how you can do this without having to use WebSockets. So let's go back to Alpha now and take a look at how this was uh, in fact set up. So we'll go back to Alpha and here is our uh, component that we're running. And the first thing to, that you need to do is you need to go to the um, properties section over there and then in the pusher real-time application you need to turn on the uh, pusher application checkbox and then you need to go over here to the configuration section and you need to enter your credentials for your pusher account so you can get credentials for a pusher account by going to pusher.com so if we go um, I believe it's uh, over here to pusher.com you'll see you can sign up for a free account and the uh, free account allows um, I think up to a hundred simultaneously connected clients uh, and a hundred thousand messages uh, per month so basically once you go to um, uh, your pusher account you'll get your credentials so you can enter your app ID your key your secret and your cluster and then you can also specify the URL for the pusher library that needs to be loaded automatically and then finally you can specify a comma delimited list of channels that you want to listen on so when you load this component it's going to automatically be initialized now if we go back and we look at 
our uh, at our component, you'll see that there's a button here called Initialize Pusher. So basically, when the component is first loaded, Pusher will automatically be initialized. However, in a PhoneGap application, it's possible that when you launch the application by tapping on a button on the home screen of your device, you don't actually have a network connection at that point in time. And if that's the case, you will not be able to initialize Pusher because uh, you will not be able to fetch the URL. You, the, you, you get you will not be able to fetch the JavaScript library at the pusher URL. So therefore, you'll need to uh, initialize pusher later on uh, at the time that you do have a connection. And so you can do that by clicking on this uh, button over here, which will initialize, uh, which will initialize uh, pusher. And then basically, you'll be able to subscribe and re and receive messages. So this button to initialize pusher and these two buttons here to send out messages were implemented using Action JavaScript. So let's go back to the component now, go over to controls, and we'll see here that let's go first to the initialize pusher uh, button. So that's done using Action JavaScript. So there's an action in Action JavaScript called uh, pusher service actions, and if we edit it, we'll see that basically there are a number of actions that are exposed. So the first action is uh, to initialize the pusher service. Then you can subscribe to a channel. So this would allow you to, to subscribe to a channel after the initialization is complete. So the initialization specifies which channels you want to uh, uh, listen to, and that, that initialization takes place when the component is rendered. But then after the fact, after the component has initially been rendered, you can go and subscribe to additional channels. This allows you to unsubscribe from a channel, and this allows you to send a message. So basically this um, sends a me broadcasts a message on a particular channel to all clients who are listening on that uh, channel. So basically, we chose the initialize pusher service action over here, and um, then we specified that after the pusher library has been loaded, we want to execute this function uh, pusher load um, uh, complete. Uh, so the loading of the pusher library or the initialization is done by making an AJAX callback, and the reason that it's done on an AJAX callback is so that you don't have to expose your push your pusher credentials on the client side. So the AJAX callback basically has an on complete and on fail and an on device uh, offline handler which you can specify if you want. So in actually the buttons to actually send out messages were done also with Action JavaScript. So here is an action to send a message. So we specified what channel we want to specify this, what we want to send the message on, and then we've also specified the event name. So by default, um, the messages are received and sent uh, on an event name called underbar underbar pusher event, and then the client machine that handles uh, uh, that message will. Um, be able to handle the me received messages in the on pusher message client side event. And then we've specified that the text for our message will come from executing this JavaScript function called get message one. So again, the send message action is a server side action, which means it's done on an AJAX callback. And so there's a possibility that the AJAX callback will fail. And here are your JavaScript event handlers to deal with that possibility. So if we go now and we look at the uh, client-side code, the event, we can see that in our client-side event we have an on pusher message event. And when this event uh, this event fires when a message is received from the pusher service. And inside the event we'll be able to access e.message, which is the actual message body e.channel, which is the channel that the message was received on, and then finally e.event name, which is the name of the event uh, that uh, handles the um, uh, the message. So in this case, the event name is always going to be underbar underbar 
pusher message. So this is how we uh, configured the pusher service and in the next video we'll show another use case for pusher where we do real-time message, real-time location reporting. Thanks very much for watching.